So today we're going to talk about one of the best engines ever built. But there's a small twist. This engine can be found in a Lexus. Now I know what you're thinking. A Lexus? Really? But bear with me, because this isn't your average pensioner's Lexus. This is a fire-breathing, eardrum-shattering masterpiece that makes most supercar engines seem boring in comparison. This engine is one of the most magnificent naturally aspirated engines ever created. And yet it came from Toyota, the same company responsible for Camrys, Corollas and Beige retirement mobiles. But as we all know, Toyota, when it really wants to, can create some of the most extraordinary machines on the planet. The 2000 GT, the Supra and the TS-050 Le Mans racer. And then there's this, the 4.8 liter naturally aspirated V10 designed to power one of the most finely tuned obsessively developed supercars of all time, the Lexus LFA. So how did Toyota go from making reliable commuter cars to crafting one of the most celebrated V10s in history? Well, let's start at the beginning. So at the turn of the millennium, Toyota wasn't exactly known for making performance cars. Yes, there was the Supra, but that was about it. Lexus, their luxury arm, was even worse. It made quiet, comfortable cars that wrapped their owners in a cocoon of leather and silence. But Toyota's executives wanted more. They wanted Lexus to be taken seriously on a global stage, not just as a maker of plush sedans, but as a true competitor to BMW's M divisions, Mercedes, AMG, and even Ferrari. And so the LFA project was born. Unlike most supercars, which start with a chassis and then get an engine, the LFA was built around the its engine. The goal was simple, build a high revving, naturally aspirated V10 that would deliver the kind of driving experience that sent tingles down your spine. And in theory, Toyota could just re-engineer one of their previous engines for the project, but no, they started from scratch, enlisting Yamaha, who had previously helped them with the legendary 4AGE and 2JZ engines to co-develop an entirely new high-tech power plant. The result was the 1LR GUE, a 72-degree 4.8-liter V10 that defied expectations at every turn. So let's get into the engineering details, because this thing is a work of art. You see, the 1LR GUE is not just any V10, it's one of the most advanced, lightweight and high revving naturally aspirated engines ever put into a road car. For starters, the block is made from aluminium, keeping it light while maintaining structural rigidity. The cylinder is magnesium, because aluminium was just too heavy for Toyota's liking, and the connecting rods, they are titanium. That's right, Toyota went all in on exotic materials, ensuring that the engine was as light as possible. And the result, while the 1LR GUE weighs just 203 kilograms, to put that into perspective, this V10 weighs the same as the 3 liter straight 6 2JZ engine. This extreme lightness wasn't just for the sake of it, it allowed the LFA to maintain an almost perfect 4852 weight distribution, ensuring razor sharp handling. Inside things get even more impressive. The engine used a dry sump lubrication system, which eliminates the need for a traditional oil pan, allowing the engine to sit lower in the chassis. This lowers the LFA center of gravity, improving handling and ensuring the car remains stable under extreme cornering forces. And when I say extreme, I mean sustained 2G cornering, something that most road cars can only dream of. Then there's the valve train. It uses titanium valves and lightweight rocker arms with a 12 to 1 compression ratio, which in human terms means this engine loves to rev, and rev it does. The 1LR GUE redlines at 9,000 RPM and can go from idle to redline in just 0.6 seconds. That's quicker than your brain can even process what is happening. In fact, the other discovered that no traditional analog tachometer could keep up with the engine's rapid acceleration, so they had to develop an entirely new digital tachometer just to display the revs accurately. Anyways, let's talk about power. I mean, revs is one thing, but it actually has to make some power. So the 1LR GUE produces 552 horsepower at 8,700 RPM and 354 pound-feet of torque or 418 Nm of torque at 6,800 RPM. These numbers aren't mind-blowing by today's standards. After all, we live in a world where twin-turbo V6s can churn out 700 horsepower with relative ease. But power figures were never the point with this engine. The magic of this engine isn't in the numbers, it's in the way it delivers them. You see, unlike most modern turbocharged engines, which often 
feel like an on-off switch, the 1L RGUE delivers power in a beautifully linear fashion. It bolts and bolts and bolts, encouraging you to chase that 9000 RPM redline with every gear change. And speaking of gear changes, let's address the elephant in the room, the 6-speed automated manual transmission. Yes, it's a single clutch gearbox, and yes, by today's standards, it's a bit slow, but in the context of the LFA, it does make sense. It was chosen because it was lighter than a dual clutch system, and it provided a more visceral, mechanical feel, just like the rest of the car. But let's talk about the best part of this engine, the sound, because the engine doesn't just perform like a race car, it sounds like one too. Yamaha being the mad scientists they are, brought in their musical instrument division to fine-tune the acoustics of the intake and exhaust system. The result, a three-stage titanium exhaust system that produces an F1-inspired wail, unlike anything else on the road. The engine note starts as a deep growl at low revs before transitioning into a spine-tingling howl as you climb past 5000 RPM. And once you hit 8000, it becomes a full-blown banshee scream, echoing through tunnels and directing the attention of everyone in your vicinity onto you. You see, there's a reason people say the Lexus LFA is one of the best-sounding road cars ever made. The 1L RGUE doesn't just produce noise, it sings. But sadly, as with all great things, the 1LR GUE had a short life. Lexus produced the LFA for just two years, from 2010 to 2012, building only 500 units. Each engine was hand-assembled by a single technician, and each one came with a plaque bearing their name. And then it was gone. No successor, no turbocharged follow-up, just silence. But even though the 1LR GUE is no longer in production, its influence is still felt today. The knowledge the and Yamaha gained from building this engine helped shape modern high-performance engines, and the LFA itself remains one of the most sought-after supercars on the planet. And if you ever get the chance to hear one of these in person, cherish the moment. Believe me, I did. And trust me, videos don't do it justice. This thing is loud, but in the best way. It gives you goosebumps and gets you more excited than a kid in a candy store. This engine is what happens when engineers are given free reign to create something truly special. And special it was. This engine is the definition of why EVs can never win over true car enthusiasts. Hearing an LFA scream gets you excited even when you aren't even the one driving it. Yes, it isn't as fast as a 1000 horsepower EV, but damn, if I were ever given the choice between the two, I would take this over any EV on the planet. But at the end of the video, please let me know what you guys think of this engine, what do you guys think of the LFA, and if there is any engine you think that sounds better, except for the Master 787B, let me know down below so I can go look at it and make, maybe make a video on it. Anyways, at the end of this video, please let me know what you guys thought of the video, and if you guys enjoyed this video, please have a like and subscribe to the channel, and if you guys did like it, you'll most probably like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see the thumbnails like, I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.